Speak about Ripple Heights and uh, what we do, how it came into existence, and um, also uh, just a quick snapshot of my background. So my name is uh, Chiri Uweche. I'm from I'm from Asaba, Delta State in Nigeria. Background: I'm a data scientist by profession, and um, what got us into Ripple Heights? I think when we started seeing God's touch in our lives, we looked at it that, hey, wait a minute. I think everybody complains about, oh, Nigeria is so bad. Or we don't have this in Nigeria, we don't have that in Nigeria. But the question we should ask ourselves is that, what have we actually done to give back? What have we done to give back to Nigeria itself as a country? You know, this chap you see on the list there, I went to primary school with him in Ikeja, in Lagos. Yeah, and um, he's also based in the UK, he's based in Manchester. You know, and um, we were quite very good friends in uh, primary school. So we, we decided and said, okay, when we started seeing God's work in our lives, we said, listen, you know, what can we do? Even if, even if it's going to be just that small, that small fraction, that we can actually contribute back to Nigeria or Africa as a whole. So we decided to say, okay, what were those things we kind of lacked when we were growing up? You know, I mean, well, um, I would say at least I didn't lack many of those things, but many of my colleagues did lack some of those things. And one of the key things that they lacked was water, clean drinking water. There was no power while we were growing up in Nigeria also too. Power was an issue. You know, we knew we could not dabble into power. But what time we said, yeah, we could try agriculture. We had some, some, some of our friends back then in primary school that come to school hungry. We said, okay, let's dabble into agriculture also. Then we now decided to go to actually add sports into it also too. So we have, in total, we have three different programs that we run off. So we have our Water is Life program, we have our Go Agro Initiative program, and we have our Slum to League program. It's quite robust. Yeah, and um, I mean, working in big data, you, you obviously would actually deal with a lot of uh, data simultaneously and heavy, 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 huge files. So we decided that, okay, we can handle that, even if we're going to actually flesh it out sequentially. So eventually, we said, okay, let's start off with what is life. What is life, the, the, the whole idea of what is life, yeah, is to provide portable drinking water to communities in Africa, not just Nigeria, in Africa as a whole, that don't have clean drinking water. So we decided that, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to actually visit those communities, we're going to have a list of those communities, you know, we're going to investigate the source of their water in those communities and see how we can reach that gap for them. 
So we said, okay, where are we going to start from? This um, Ripple Heights is fully registered in the UK. Uh, we registered it with Charity Commissions UK five years ago. So it's, a, it's, it's an international charity, so it doesn't really do much in the UK apart from like raising funds and moving those funds to Africa to implement such kind of projects. So at the end of the day, um, we said, okay, let's start from Nigeria, since we know the terrain well enough. You know, and um, also to um, where we're going to start from. Let's start from Lagos. So we had one or two friends that work for uh, the Lagos State Government, and we approached them and we said, "Listen, we put these charities together, you know, and we want to identify these communities in Lagos that have this water problem." They said, "Oh, we've got loads." So <laughs> they organized a meeting, and um, we we. Attended that meeting and discussed extensively at length. And um, they said, okay, that's 10 communities, we can introduce you to those communities. So we, we chose only one. I was in Lagos for one month just to deliver that project. You know, and we chose the very first project we actually initiated was in um, a community called Ararumi Community in Ibejuleki. I think that's somewhere on the island. You know? So we. Went into the community, had a meeting with the ballet, and um, he, we, we actually ascertained the need for portable drinking water in that community, and we saw that they were lacking, and they were, they were suffering for water, water issues. So he said, okay, fine, you can site the plant. He gave us a site where we can site the plant, and we, we kicked off work the next day. Uh, kicked off work the next day, drilled into the ground. Lagos being you can hit the water table very quickly in Lagos because it's, it's surrounded by water. So we, we drilled and we hit the water table in no time, but the only challenge we had in Lagos was that you had to filter the water, most of the island, you know, because it's all salty and it's not very clear and all that. So what we did was we actually now um, embedded, we actually embedded filters, you know, to actually filter the water before it actually goes into the, the, the overhead tank. We delivered that project in about, about six weeks and commissioned it, so it was actually in collaboration with Lagos State Government. Ribble <laughs> Heights in collaboration with Lagos State Government. If you go to projects, please, if you just, if, if you let us. So we, we commissioned that project, what is like, uh, projects, and we go what is like, and you click on that one. So, okay, yeah, you can leave that one there. So, so, we commissioned that project in collaboration with Lagos State Government. Lagos State Government did not give us a penny. And, in fact, as of that time, we had not even started seeking donations from anybody. And it will shock you that, you know, we've, so far, we have delivered uh, Lagos, two in Lagos, one in Bedway. There was another one coming up in Abia, but the pandemic struck. And for those three projects we have delivered so far, it's been myself and my friend that has funded those projects. 95% have been funded by myself and my friend. So, well, we're not, we're not really like, um, what's the word? We're not really like, uh, it's, it's, it, we're not really like, if, it's one of those kind of things that we have actually, uh, tuned our mind in such a way that, okay, between me and you, every year we'll deliver one project. Every year we'll deliver one project, whether donations or no donations. It's like a, like a way of giving back, you know? So, um, at the end of the day, um, we, we've done three, three water projects, and this year we decided to, the admin was getting very heavy, and I could not handle it alone anymore. So we decided to scale up and decided to actually uh, get original office in Ibadan. We could not afford Lagos obviously, so we have to go to Ibadan. You know? So we got original office in Ibadan about four months ago. We fully financed that by ourselves. Uh, computers, everything, state of the art I'll call it. You know? And um, we have, at the moment, about six people working for us on monthly salaries. How they get paid is not through donations, 
they get paid through me and Henry's pockets. So at the end of the day, they've been working there for like three months. So we have a regional manager, we have a sustainability expert, we have a, a, a front desk admin administrator, we have a, a media and publicity analyst. You know, we have two security men at the gates that work day and night. You know, so in hindsight, we. We are trying to actually get our Go Agro program. If you go to Go Agro, please, uh, go to projects and Go Agro. So, because we've not, we've not done badly for our Water is Life project. The, the, the video you are watching was um, uh, one of our projects that we delivered in Van Dekia, Benway State. And that project was delivered about three years ago. We actually delivered that project right at their market square. And um, so far, Vandeke was one of the, the projects that gave us so much challenge because we could not hit the water table very quickly. You know, we had to drill about 97 meters deep into the ground before we could actually find water. So we nearly gave up with, uh, for Vandekia. But uh, as God would have it, we were able to actually hit the water. And um, what we normally do is that we, we spread our pipelines. So we don't just uh, drill a borehole and get a fetching point next to the borehole. What we do is that we we'll drill and the hub, the hardware itself remains in one location. Then we actually recirculate pipes, northwise, southwise, eastwise, so that when they are coming to fetch the water, yes, the traffic is controlled. So if your house is closer to the north fetching side, you end up going to the north than coming down south. You know, so that's what we have, we have done to actually manage the traffic and manage people, manage fights around the, the hub, just having one fetching point. So for what I like, I think to a degree we have um, we have done quite well. And um, we said, okay, fine, now we have to scale up, we have to improve our game gets um, employ people that will actually be applying for grants you know monday to friday their work is to be trying to get see how we can get grants to move to the next level so um the go agro bit is uh just focused towards farming and agriculture and trying to use agriculture initiatives to actually to actually boost food production and at the same time create employment also too so the, the, the vision is to actually come up with um, something called like the Ripple Heights Farm. My regional manager in, uh, in Ibadan, she has a, an animal science background. So her first degree was in animal science. Her master's degree was in animal science also too. So she's actually staying the ship on that and trying to give us guidelines on how to actually develop this roadmap and how we're going to go about this roadmap, how we're going to approach this roadmap. At the same time, she's managing the team in Lebanon, you know, to try to see how we can get sponsorships and uh, align ourselves with um, international agricultural agencies, you know, to help us to develop this project uh, the way we want it to be. You know, so the whole idea basically is to come up with that farm, that that farm will form, uh, will, um, will be also a research center. We, in fact, myself, I had to even buy one cattle because um, one of our one of our workers that we we've got is uh, he's into uh, artificial insemination. He's also an animal animal scientist. So I had to buy one cow to practice that and see how we can crossbreed our local cows to see how we can actually, because the issues, the challenges we face with our local cows in Nigeria is that they take them roaming around the country and when it comes to producing milk, they are not, they are not able to produce as, as much milk as the foreign breeds. So what we've tried to do right now is try to see how we can cross the local breed with the foreign breed, you know, and see how we can also now practice ranching moving forward. So that's uh, like a snapshot of the farm we're looking at and uh, what we're trying to put in place, the structure we're trying to put in place and how we, we intend to try, we intend to develop the, the farm. The third one is called Storm to Leak. Storm to Leak is just, uh, it's, uh, it's focused on sports and trying to see how we can use 
sporting initiatives to get the youth out of off the streets, engage them into sports, and see, yeah, we've done some, we've done that in Lagos, you know, so engage them through sporting activities and see, that's myself in Lagos with, with, with the team, you know, uh, with, the, with the sport group, and see how we can actually showcase them to the West, and, um, you know, just to some form of like recreational kind of activities. Yeah, this is not as uh, complex as the other two I just described. So I think, I mean, if we're going to be talking about Ripple Heights, we can talk about Ripple Heights from now to tomorrow. <laughs> so I will just try and so that we can get some time back. You know, I'll try and just round up and just say to everyone that uh, it's a pleasure uh, introducing uh, Ripple Heights to you. And um, we're open to any form of suggestions, donations, partnerships, or sponsorships, you know, um, anything. There's really nothing that is not valuable. Ideas are even the most valuable, I would say. So um, I would say, well, on behalf of myself and Henry, um, it's been a pleasure discussing this.